All right. So we're in the last part of One Man's Faith, and, and we're looking at the deeds or the fruit of the flesh. Okay? The flesh produces these things. It, 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 it draws these things out of them. And these are acts. They're deeds. They're acts. These are things we commit, we commit to. The first three deal with sexual um, uh, sins. Uh, immorality, which is porneia, uh, which is fornication. Immorality, impurity, promiscuity. Those, those are, are, are sexual acts that are outside the boundaries of marriage. The next two we just looked at were idolatry and witchcraft. Witchcraft comes from the word pharmakeia, which means drugs. We've got to watch out. Because any drug that is mind-altering opens you up for demonic forces to come and to live and dwell and work in your life. Even if you're a Christian. They will sit there because you've opened the door and they will attack you. Listen, I'm even going to go so far as to say is you, we've got to watch what we take f even from a pharmacy. Even what a doctor orders. Because any drug that will alter you so that you're not depressed is altering your mind, which is not much different than an illegal drug that alters your mind. We've just accepted them. Because instead of using God's Word and God's way to get rid of things, like depression, like being um, uh, bipolar, we take legal drugs which alter the mind to make us normal. And God's got a better plan. That's all I'm saying. But, but, I got in a conversation with a young man the other week, and he says, well, if I'd, had, if I'd had my chance, I would vote for all drugs to be legal. I said, wait a minute. I said, how can you vote to have drugs legal and be a Christian? Because you see, this is what this is talking about. These are the deeds of the flesh, and one of them is witchcraft, which is pharmakeia, which are drugs. And they alter your state of mind and they open you up so that demonic forces can come in and drive you crazy. And he will because you've opened the door, especially if you're a Christian. He wants to come in and he wants to, he wants to so bug you, so mess with your life that you're no good to the Christian world, to the kingdom of God. That's what he wants to do because the word of God, John 10.10, uh, 10, Jesus says, and, and he has come to kill, he says he has only come to kill, steal, and destroy. So we've got to be careful. We've got to be careful. There are ways, God has ways, that are much better, much safer, and more enjoyable to get us in a state of euphoria, if, I, if you want to use that word. You just got to go His way and not the way of the world. So those two deal with uh, uh, deal with uh, idolatry idolatry not adultery they deal with our relationship to God and then he goes into things now you know you know you know we're all right with understanding those being sins but but listen to these next deeds of the flesh enmities strife jealousy 
outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkenness, and carousing. Those 10 deal with things that we deal with and have to fight against. Enmities is hatred, hostility, strife or quarrels. Jealousy actually comes from the word to be hot. Hot, you know, hot under the collar, you know, you turn green, you know. Outburst of anger. Uh, the, it's, the word is passion, breathing hard, you know. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I think uh, to rush, to breathe hard, to blow smoke. This is outburst of anger. By implication, it's to sacrifice, slaughter for any purpose. That's outburst of anger. We get so mad that we want to kill. You may say, well, I didn't really mean it, you know. But yeah, but you did because you thought it. Because that's how angry you got. Disputes or strife, factions or anger. Dissensions is disunion, standing against. A faction is to take for yourself. You separate things because you want something out of it. So you create a faction. You create your own little grouping, your own little political party. <laughs> so, so, okay, uh, you know, we don't like what's being set up, so we come over here and we do our own thing. That's a faction. That's wrong. Uh, envy is ill will, ill will. It's you... Envy leads you to want to spoil or ruin things. Drunkenness is to be intoxicated. Carousing is, you know, just letting loose, so to speak. They're all deeds of the flesh. And it says, those that do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. You want to check where you are? Then look at what, if, if any of these things you're doing. Do you have outbursts of anger? Do you feel jealous toward people? See, those are things we can't afford to do. Because they're deeds of the flesh. They're not deeds of the Spirit or the fruit of the Spirit. Colossians 3 says, Therefore consider the members of your earthly body as dead to immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which amounts to idolatry. They amount to idolatry? Well, immorality, impurity, passion, yeah, we can see that evil desire. Yeah, you want what's evil and not what's good. Greed? You want Money, you want what that will bring you, not what God will bring you. These things lead you away from what God has for you. For it is because of these things that the wrath of God will come upon the sons of disobedience. And in them also you once walked when you were living in them. But now you also put them all aside Here's what he says, anger, wrath, malice, slander, abusive speech. Put them all aside, the deeds of the flesh. Put them all aside. Do not lie to one another since you laid aside your old self with its evil practices and have put on the new self who is being renewed to the true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him. All right, see, we're supposed to put those things aside. What are we supposed to put aside? Anger, wrath, malice, slander, abusive speech. In other words, enmity, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, all these things that Paul lists in Galatians chapter 5. We're to put them aside, he tells us in Colossians. Put them aside because they are the deeds of the flesh and uh, they will bring the wrath of God. 
Oh, but I only have, let it happen every now and then. You're still letting it happen. That's practice. Don't let those things happen. Instead, he tells us, he says, but the fruit, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. If you, you can, listen, I've told you this before, you can do anything you want to as long as you don't violate, I'm going to now say four principles. Love God, love your neighbor, love one another, and walk in the fruit of the Spirit. There's no, how does he put it? Uh, there is no, there's no law against those things. In other words, there's nothing that says, thou shalt not love, thou shalt not be uh, gentle, thou shalt not walk in joy. You see, these are the things that we're supposed to walk in. These are fruit. Fruit doesn't come immediately, but it, they are things that are seen. Do people look at you and they see the fruit of the Spirit? You have a tree growing and it produces fruit. Now, if you water that tree, then you'll get good fruit. If you put fertilizer on that tree, that'll even help it to grow more. But if you don't, you'll have shriveled up fruit, unedible, unusable not good for anything. But if you will water it with the Word, if you will fertilize it with prayer, you will grow fruit that people will want to have. They'll want to be around you. They'll want to have what you have. And this is what God wants for us. Not the deeds of the flesh, because that's the soul. He wants you to walk in the Spirit. And so I want to encourage you, walk in the Spirit. Say, Father, forgive me and help me to walk in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Have a great week. I'll see you next time.